Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker here. It is Sunday, May 26, 2019, and I am back to share with you some of the initial results I had from the estate sale that I went to on May 9th, and that's what you're looking at here are some of the items I picked up at that estate sale. And if you remember, and I will go ahead and link the video at the end of the description or also put it uh, put it below in the description and also give you a um, something to click on at the end so you can see that. Um, but I went about an hour and 40 minutes early because I had my eye on some vintage Wagner Magnolite Dutch ovens and I saw a sale price. I thought it was hard to see from the picture, but you know, when I look at estate sales, if I'm going to go to estate sales, I study the pictures the day before and, and look up comps and some of the items and try to determine if it's worth my while going. And that's one of my tips. If you don't see a whole lot of stuff that's worth your while going and you, and you don't have the time to wait cuz some estate sales you really have to wait a while to to get in if you want to get first dibs on stuff but as you have to use your best judgment there but anyway I saw a sale price of $20 on this Dutch oven and the recent comp for what I thought it was sold for 175 but again I didn't get close to these at the estate sale I couldn't see exactly what they were so there's a possibility they weren't what I thought they were. But uh, there was somebody ahead of me, uh, had two numbers lower than me that made a beeline for the Dutch ovens. And I, I, she claimed them. And if you want the details in that, you can go back to the first video where I, I share a little bit more about that. But at any rate, at that point in time, I went and looked at a, a bunch of books in the basement because these Dutch ovens were in the basement to look for vintage cookbooks. And let me go ahead and adjust the camera down so you can see a little bit better there. Um, but these other, or these books right here, uh, I did not find in the basement. So I headed back upstairs and at the top of the stairs in a uh, closet between the living room and the kitchen were a bunch of vintage cookbooks. So I picked the best four. They were a dollar a piece, took them up to the front table where the ladies were sitting and check out and said, I want to buy these, but I'm going to continue looking. And I also had looked at some Revere wear. These are pre-68 double circle. And it said process patent pending on the bottom without actually a city and state where they were made. These are the very earliest ones, the most valuable. And I knew they were in the family room. So I went to the family room and picked up the 10 inch skillet with matching lid and the eight quart stock pot with the matching lid. They were extremely good condition. I knew I'd have to clean them because cleaning them also gets you more money. But I figured I'd pick up the larger pieces because they had a bunch of other Revere wear and I presume double circle uh, pre-68 uh, saucepans and such. But if I'm going to spend equal amount of time cleaning, figuring out how I'm going to um, ship them and packing them and listing them. I want the biggest one. So I picked up this one and this one and they fetch more money. So for my time that I'm going to spend, I want to try to maximize the profit as much as possible. So I did pick up these and these here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, rotate the camera a little bit. These are fedora hats that um, I've done well with men's. I, you know, I've sell them for 50 to to 70, you know, I've sold men's hats, cowboy hats, um, depending on what, what I sold a beaver hat. I wish I had that to show you, but that, I think that was from last, last fall, somewhere in there, but I do really well with men's hats. Women's hats is kind of untested. So we'll see on these. And then I'm going to go ahead and click the video and get over to the other area that I picked up. And here we go. I also picked up 10 CDs and six, six of these came in jewel cases, which they were a dollar a piece, and four of them came in a cardboard cover. This one was sealed. These three were unsealed, so she threw in three of the unsealed ones for free and I paid a dollar for the, the remaining seven. So I got 10 of them for $7. There are a couple of brooches that I picked up at the very end of the sale. I was looking, I had my loop with me, and one of these is a Trifari crown and a little bit more valuable than your typical brooch. But we'll see what it sells for. You don't know until somebody buys it. And then a sealed VHS movie. Can't remember what it was, but for 50 cents, and the comps weren't bad, I went ahead and picked it up because it was easy to list. It'll be easy to ship. So there we go. So I, I did, you know, 
so I spent about $30 at that estate sale. My goal was to get three to $400 in gross sales. And so a couple of tips here, and then I want to share with you the, the results of my initial sales from the estate sale. It was to get there early, especially if there's something you really want, have a, and also have a plan B. Uh, look at various items, know several niches, several niche areas, and look at where where in the house these things are located so you can get them um, if in the event you don't get the item that you went to get. And then the other thing is as soon as you get there, go to the front door to see if they have numbers in a basket or if they're passing out numbers. Many times the estate sale companies get there early and they will give you a number if you knock on the door. So make sure you get the number because the early bird gets the worm. Um, and I always usually keep my parking place outside because I bring along work that I can do in the car, make sure my my char my cell phone is charged up, and I get some work done while I wait. Uh, I don't I can't can't stand wasting time. And uh, or the, the other thing you could do if it's a nice day is you could take a walk, take a walk in the neighborhood and come back. You got your number already. Get some exercise. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and share with you uh, the results I had on the. Uh, um, estate sale. I've got some uh, of the final, oops, not that. Here we go. Um, here we go. Uh, the first sale I made within an hour of listing, this was made on May the 9th, about an hour after I listed it. This is a, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick up the camera here. This is a Cleveland Orchestra with the conductor Franz Welser Most uh, Mozart's The Marriage of Figaro Opera. And I do not like opera, but I know there are some fans out there. So I picked up the CD and sold it for $29.99, my full asking price plus shipping. And that's the first CD sale. And then a day or so later, I sold four of them. And I will back off on this a little bit. It's hard to get this uh, tripod, doesn't seem to want to work on the cell phone, but I don't want to use the GoPro in this video. So anyway, the second uh, CD, I sold four more to the same buyer, and this is an international sale to Japan. But this one here is a Cleveland Orchestra. It was free. It was the unsealed cardboard holder. It sold for $49.99, my full asking price, plus $275 shipping. The next one was the sealed CD. This is a Brahms Requiem. And it was actually recorded in Vienna. And this is a patron CD. All of these were actually patron CDs. And what that means is they are not sold to the public at large. They're only made available for sale to patrons of the orchestra that subscribe. And apparently this lady was a subscriber to the orchestra. She had a ton of these. I just got the best ones. But this one sold for $79.99 plus shipping. And then the next one was one of the cheaper ones. This was in a just jewel case. It was open, but in very good condition. Sold for $29.99 plus shipping. And then when I sell used ones, I do randomly test some of the tracks, and I take more than three or four pictures. I take a picture of the top of the CD and take a picture of the other side of the CD. And that way they can kind of see what condition it's in, the artwork, the insert needs to be in good condition, and if the jewel case isn't in good condition, I'll replace it with a brand new one. I can get them pretty cheap uh, through a guy in my a local eBay meetup group. Uh, next up was one of the other on-sealed cardboard ones. This one had high comps. It sold for $79.99 plus shipping. And this is a, also a Cleveland Orchestra patron CD. And, uh, and I, so I give them, I let them see uh, the condition of the CDs. Then the next step was a Revere Wear, the eight quart stock pot sold. I took a best offer of 50 plus shipping on top. And this one, the double circles do well. They don't have a city and state where they're made, but it'll say uh, patent process pending. And that means it's the earliest of this type of uh, stock pot and they're the most collectible. So this one did pretty well. I still have the 10 inch up, but I've got four watchers on it right now. So event it will sell in time. And then uh, my last sale of the initial round of sales was a Better Homes and Gardens on uh, 1989. Uh, we can see over here, uh, second case-bound edition, first printing cookbook, and the earlier and the first edition printing usually does better on books. So, you know, make sure it's not the 27th printing of whatever it is. Um, so that sold for $14.99, my full price plus economy shipping 
431. And uh, then I'll show you actually how I made out on my sales. So here, um, so far the first sale CD of, um, or the Marriage of Figaro Orchestra, $29.99 plus $2.75 shipping. Total sale was $32.74. So I just wanted to show you how that broke down. So I so I just listed the total there, the the item plus shipping there, so you could see less fees of six sixty one. This one was free. I netted twenty six dollars and thirteen cents. The next four CDs that went to Japan thirty two seventy four, fifty two seventy four, eighty two seventy four, and eighty two seventy four all included shipping for a total of two fifty ninety six. Less eBay PayPal fees, the $2 item cost for the four CDs and shipping of $7.28, and I netted $2.0404 profit on those. That was a nice flip. I was really, really psyched about that one. And then next up, we have the Revere Wear, so it was $50 plus shipping of, uh, it's right, my cursor is right here, $62.30. And my fees were $24.29, including $6 for the pot. I netted $38.01. And then the fourth sale, the Better Homes and Gardens Cookbook, it was $19.30, which includes shipping. And then, of course, I backed that back out, plus the PayPal eBay fees and the $1 item cost. I netted $11.10 on that. So my gross sales were $365.30. And I net profit of $279.28 on all seven items, and I paid $9 for those items, so not bad at all. And I still have about 23, or um, I still have the remaining items up on eBay, and hopefully they will sell. But at this point, my goal was for my $30 spent, I wanted to make three to four hundred in sales. The goal has been met, and my other items will sell in time. So this is so important, you know, it doesn't matter if all your items don't sell. Estate sales and rummage sales and barn, sometimes barn sales and sometimes garage sales, just depending on what they have. You can get your items for the cheapest cost and you have the greatest potential to make some money. Um, also auctions, I just, there's not that many auctions in my area that are, you know, in person, but many of them are online and that's just, I don't do those. So anyway, that's what I have here. So leave a comment or question below. Uh, thanks for watching. Please give me a sub if you haven't subbed to my channel. I'll be showing you more videos like this. Thanks and go make it a great day.